One of the best parts about Linux is being able to make it your own. So let's learn how to customize the Ubuntu desktop. All right, welcome back. So let's start changing things up a bit and turning this into the desktop of your dreams. To do that, we're going to open up the Ubuntu Software Center and we're going to search for a program called Gnome Tweaks. And what Gnome Tweaks is, is it's a tool that allows you to customize, adjust the advanced Gnome options. Remember, the desktop that Ubuntu is using by default is called the Gnome Desktop. Well, this is a tool that will allow you to change certain features of it. So once we get to the app page, we're going to click on Install, type in our super secret password, and press the Enter key. And it's good to go. So now we can click Launch straight from the Software Center, and this is it. This is the GNOME Tweaks application. So from here, we can start to change more about the desktop than just the original, uh, the original behavior. If you go into the System Settings, there are a few things you can change, and I mean very few. There's the background and the lock screen, and then there's the dock and you can do things like choose to auto hide it which means when there's a window hovering over it it vanishes and you can change the icon size and you can change the position on the screen from the left to the bottom or to the right whichever you prefer but that's about it I mean beyond that you can change things like the search and uh, no, that's that's it. So if you want to change the look and the feel of GNOME or even the behavior of it, this is the tool you need to use. So under appearance, you can start to change things like the application's colors. In this case, it's being set to Yaru, which is the default theme for Ubuntu. You can click the drop down box and you can change it to a few different things. You can choose GNOME's default theme here. Uh, I believe it's Adwaita or Adwaita. Don't, don't kill me if I don't get the pronunciation right. And you see it changes the look of things. You can, there are also dark themes that are available. This is something I personally prefer when I'm working with Ubuntu just because I like keeping the focus on the buttons and the text rather than all of the white space filling up the, the attention, taking my attention away from the, uh, the buttons, the applications. That's, that's just me, though. Uh, there's a Yaru dark theme, which I use by default. I really like this. And you can even change the cursor. So now I'm going to show you how to use the GNOME extensions. So in the GNOME software, you are able to install what are called add-ons right here. And add-ons, if you go to Shell Extensions, and it'll give you a warning, extensions are used at your own risk. Uh, if you have any problems, it's recommended to disable them. What these are is these are the heart of customization for the GNOME desktop. Because there are not a lot, I mean barely any customization options out of the box for GNOME, what they've done is they've given you the ability to code your own customizations and you can use these in order to change the look, the behavior of the GNOME desktop. So, for example, when you go into the overview, you see how the background is still clear and visible. But if you wanted to install Blur, this is an extension that applies a blur effect to the GNOME shell UI elements. So, if I installed this and I clicked on the install button, it's going to enable it by default and you'll know it's installed because it says extension settings and remove. So now when I go into the activities overview, you see how it's got this nice bl Gaussian blur in the background? So now it keeps the applications at the forefront when I'm in the activities overview. Uh, you can do this with a bunch of different extensions. Um, this is one of my favorites up here, Top Panel Workspace Scroll. So this changes workspaces by scrolling over the panel. I'm going to install this and show you what it looks like. So by installing this, I click Install, and it's done. These are very small pieces of code, and they 
they install very quickly. So instead of clicking the activities overview and going over to a new workspace and clicking the workspace, now with top panel workspace scroll enabled, I can simply go up to the top bar over here and just click down on the scroll wheel. And it changes workspaces just like that. Scrolling up goes back to the previous one. But I'm using my scroll wheel now and it saves me a lot of time versus having to enter the activities overview and then going over here. You know, even those seconds that we shave off tends to be a big boost in productivity and workflow. Now, if I was to go into, I'm going to close this and reopen it. So I can go to tweaks, press the enter key. And if I go to extensions, you can now see these are all of the extensions that I have installed. By default, uh, Ubuntu has these three installed. Desktop icons, Ubuntu app indicators, and Ubuntu dock. Why they're not enabled, I'm not sure. I think that's a glitch, which I did report, and I know that it's been reported by others. I'm sure it's being worked on for a later release, but by default, these are enabled, despite the fact that it looks like they're not. So if I wanted to enable or disable an extension, in this case, let's say blur, I simply toggle it on and off right here. And now that it's switched to off, if I go into activities, you'll see that blur effect is now gone. So I can use this in order to enable or disable extensions. And also I can click on the gearbox and make changes or adjustments to the parameters to those extensions if they have them. So in this case for top panel workspace scroll, there's a show indicator option where I can choose if I select it. Now when I scroll down, you'll see in the center of the screen, it's indicating which workspace I'm on. So if, for example, I create a new one here, I open up a new window, and now I, it creates a new workspace, you can see which workspace I go to when I scroll up and down on the, uh, the mouse wheel. So handy, handy feature, great way to customize the desktop using the extensions. So let's see, if you want to change the fonts, you can. This does result sometimes in some issues. I personally don't recommend it, but hey, it's your desktop. If you want to change it, by all means. You can change the interface text. And you can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to remember that it's Ubuntu regular. And if I wanted to change it to say, I don't know, Sawaz D regular and hit select. Well, now you see the font has been changed and it changes for darn near everywhere on the, uh, on the interface. So if you want to give it kind of a cool, you, you know, if you want to adjust the, the font to make the font look a little cool, maybe use a bold uh, ability. There you go. But for now, I'm going to change this back. The reason I say just be careful is because uh, it might result in some aliasing or might make your uh, fonts really hard to read. So just an encouragement there. Okay, back to normal. Uh, with keyboard and mouse settings, you can uh, you can do quite a few adjustments. Um, if you wanted to, if you have another window key or super key on the keyboard, you can adjust which one activates the activities overview, this overview here. Uh, as well as a couple of tweaks with the mouse. The top bar is a big one. By default, the GNOME desktop has an activities overview hot corner. So that with this enabled, which it is again normally by default, when you move your mouse to the top left of the activities, it immediately goes into the activities overview. So without needing to click anything, you just move your mouse to the top left and it activates the overview. That's the behavior by default. The Ubuntu experience by default is to have it disabled. But just so you know, that is there. You can do things like change the clock settings. You can add seconds if you want to, if you're really <laughs> looking to count how much time has gone by. The Windows title bars, you can place them, you can choose this option here to place them on the left side of the windows or the right side. 
So now former versions of Ubuntu had it on the left side by default, but when they switched to the GNOME desktop, they changed it to the right. And you can also remove the maximize and minimize buttons entirely if you want to. So and again, these are just customizations to make the desktop look and behave the way that you prefer. So that's the, uh, that's the gist of it. I would encourage you to spend some time searching for GNOME extensions that will serve your unique purposes because unfortunately, not all of these describe what they do. Things like Top Icons Plus, I never would have known if I just didn't know from experience that enabling this uh, creates a system tray up here at the top left that allows you to have like the legacy icons like Dropbox or anything to show up here. But had I not tried this out previously, I would not have known what this does. Same with uh, Fruit Remove Clock. So if I install this, it has now moved the clock from the top over to the right here, similar to uh, other desktops like uh, Mac OS or Windows when it's down at the bottom. So now you have the clock over here. Some prefer that, some don't. It's, uh, again, it's purely a preference thing. But doing a quick search on these instead of just searching and scrolling through them is probably going to be a good way to figure out what kind of extensions you like and what you don't like. So one of the things that uh, Ubuntu doesn't do or GNOME doesn't do well is they don't give you a good, clear, easy, user-friendly way to install new themes or install new icons, new ways to change the appearance. That's the one part where this gets a little technical. So to do that, I, I personally like to go um, omgubuntu.co.uk is a great website for Ubuntu news, reviews, and uh, all other sorts of stuff. I mean, so by all means, bookmark them, check them out. Uh, the writer does a great job at listing things. One of those things is these, like uh, this article here, the seven best icon themes for Ubuntu. And not only does he lay out some of the icon themes, but he also gives you a good user-friendly way to install them. So let's say I wanted to, to install this uh, shadow icon theme here. I can download the shadow icon theme from Gnome Look. And it says the essential instructions are extracted in an existing directory, like your home directory forward slash dot icons forward slash shadow. So if we were to download this and uh, download the icon set right here and click on download, save the file. And in our file browser, we'll go to downloads and right click on shadow and click extract here. And it extracts the entire contents into its own folder. And from there, I can cut and go into my home uh, directory, click on show hidden files, create a new folder and call it dot icons and right click and paste it into here. Now, if all went well, <laughs> that should, uh, that should do it. So if I, close and reopen the tweaks application and I go to appearance under icons it should now show and it does this shadow icon theme so when I left click it you'll see that all of the icons are now changed and they have this cool shadowy effect and feel and when I click on this uh, it's completely changed the icon set as you can see here for the most part. Again, when you get into customization, you, you realize that not everything is perfect in the Linux world. So things like uh, GIMP now, like this, uh, this is probably the uh, Snap application and the Snap app didn't update. Let's see if I was right. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the Snap package and that didn't change. So this is one of the casualties that you encounter when customizing Ubuntu is that not everything is going to work seamlessly. It's one of the reasons where it's kind of uh, 
uncharted waters. You might find awesome stuff, you might find problems, but it's a tread at your own risk kind of a thing. Not that you have to be intimidated, but just to say expect that glitches, issues might come up here and there. So the same goes with if I wanted to try and install a different uh, theme, like a different look for the window appearance of GNOME. Uh, I could do a simple search for GNOME GTK theme. And uh, I can always rely on my, my buddy at OMG Ubuntu here. So let's say I wanted to find a new theme here. Uh, I do like Numix. And if I click on install the Numix GTK theme, uh, I will try this. Oh, that's handy. So uh, yeah, straight out of the box, it uh, asked me if I want to install this package Numix GTK theme. I can click on install. I can type in the password. And there we go. And now this uh, new mix theme here is installed. So I will have to close and reopen uh, GNOME Tweaks. And when I go into Extensions, I'm sorry, when I go into Appearance and down at Applications, you'll see now new mix is available. So it completely changed the. Uh, the look and feel of the GNOME desktop uh, for all the windows. You know, it's got more of a square uh, corners around it. So you can start to see how you could change this quite dramatically. This looked very different from how I had my system set up in the beginning. So from here on out, though, the uh, the options are yours. Uh, the appearance, the, uh, the potential is limitless. So go explore, go and make it your own. Uh, and we're, we've wrapped up this video, so uh, feel free to click on like and uh, move on to the next video, the final video, where I will show you my personal setup and how I configure the desktop to use. And maybe that'll give you some inspiration on what you can do with Ubuntu and how you can make it your own or make it something that you you desire to work with. So thanks for watching and go ahead and move on to the next video. I'll see you there.